Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul Eady. I'm a lay minister here at St. George's. A warm welcome to any visitors. If you are a visitor, please introduce yourself to the clergy afterwards and join us for a cup of coffee. We begin our service with the introit hymn, hymn 329, that Easter tide with joy was bright, and we omit verses 1 to 8.
Good morning and welcome to our service today. Our service begins on page 104. And in the season of Easter, we start at paragraph 2. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We say the Collect of Purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. The whole company of believers was united in heart and soul. Not one of them claimed any of his possessions as his own. Everything was held in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and all were held in high esteem. There was never a needy person among them, because those who had property in land or houses would sell it, bring the proceeds of the sale, and lay them at the feet of the apostles to be distributed to any who were in need. Hear the word of the Lord. Please be standing for Psalm 133. And we say it together. Behold how good and how lovely it is when brothers live together in unity. It is fragrant as oil upon the head that runs down over the beard, fragrant as oil upon the beard of Aaron that ran down over the collar of his robe. It is like a dew of Hermon, like the dew that falls up on the hill of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded his blessing, which is life forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the second reading. The second reading is from John 1, verses 1, to John 2, verses 2, the coming of Christ. In the beginning, the world already was. The world was in God's presence, and what God was, the world was. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things came to be. Without him, no created thing came into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never mastered it. There appeared a man named John. He was sent by God and came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might become believers. He was not himself the light. He came to bear witness to the light. The true light, which gives light to everybody, was even then coming into the world. He was in the world, but the world, though it owed its being to him, did not recognize him. He came to his own, and his own people would not accept him. But to all who did accept him, to those who put their trust in him, he gave the right to become children of God, born not of human stock, by the physical desire of a human father, but of God. So the word became flesh. He made his home among us, and he saw his glory, such glory as befits the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John bore witness to him and proclaimed, He comes after me, but ranks ahead of me. Before I was born, he already was. From his full store, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, but the grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, God's only Son, who is nearest to the Father's heart, has made him known. 
This is the testimony John gave when the Jews of Jerusalem sent a deputation of priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He readily acknowledged, I am not the Messiah. What then? Are you Elijah? I am not, he replied. Are you the prophet? No, he said. Then who are you? They asked. We must give an answer to those who sent us. What account do you give of yourself? He answered in the words of the prophet Isaiah. I am a voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight for the way of the Lord. Some Pharisees who were in the deputation asked him, If you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet, then why are you baptizing? I baptize in water, John replied. But among you, though you do not know him, stands the one who comes after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the strap of his sandal. This took place at Bethany, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming towards him. There is the Lamb of God, he said, who takes away the sin of the world. He it is of whom is said, After me there comes a man who ranks ahead of me. Before I was born, he already was. I did not know who he was, but the reason why I came baptizing in water was that he might be revealed to Israel. John testified again. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven, like a dove came to rest on him. I did not know him, but he was sent, but he who sent to baptize in water had told me. The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and rest is the one who is to be baptized in Holy Spirit. I have seen it and have borne witness. This is God's chosen one. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples when Jesus passed by. John looked towards him and said, There is the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard what he said, they followed Jesus. He turned and saw them following. What are you looking for, he said. They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent the rest of the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. One of the two who followed Jesus after hearing what John said was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. The first thing he did was to find his brother Simon and say to him, we have found the Messiah. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You shall be called Cephas. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. He met Philip, who like Andrew and Peter, came from Bethsaida and said to him, follow me. Philip went to find Nathanael and told him, we have found the man of whom Moses wrote in the law, the man foretold by the prophets. It is Jesus, the son of Joseph, Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, Nathaniel explained. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathaniel coming towards him, he said, here is an Israelite worthy of my name. There is nothing false in him. Nathanael asked him, How is it you know me? Jesus replied, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip spoke to you. Rabbi, said Nathanael, you are the son of God. You are king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe this because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than that. Then he said, 
In very truth, I tell you all, you will see heaven wide open and God's angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Two days later, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also amongst the guests. Hear the word of the Lord. Please be standing for our gradual hymn, 176, Happy are they, they that love God. Those written here have 
Let us say the Nicene Creed together, paragraph 24, page 108. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Last week's Gospel reading from Mark ended with the silence of the woman who discovered the empty tomb because they were afraid. Today's Gospel reading begins with the disciples hiding in a locked room on the evening of the first day of the week because they were afraid. They had heard from Mary early that morning about the empty tomb. Peter and the beloved disciple had confirmed it. And later, Mary had also told them that she had seen the Lord, but nobody else had. There was a glimmer of hope, but they were still afraid afraid of what the Jewish leaders might do to them and uncertain of what resurrection would mean, assuming it was true. And when we are afraid, we need reassurance. And that is what Jesus gives to them. Suddenly, he is there in the room with them. The future is still uncertain, but God in Jesus is still with them. He says, peace be with you and shows them his scars. There is no longer any doubt that this is Jesus. They recognize him by his scars. They are overjoyed and no longer afraid. And Jesus reassures them again, peace be with you. At his last supper with the disciples, Jesus had promised to give his disciples peace. Not as the world gives, only in the absence of conflict, but peace that comes from Jesus, who has overcome the evil and suffering of the world. Peace that brings hope and confidence. But this peace is not ours alone. This peace is to be proclaimed for all. And having reassured the disciples of his presence, Jesus sends them out to continue his work. 
And he speaks the same words to us. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And he gives us the power that we need to continue the work. Jesus breathes on us and gives to us the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God with power over sin. Thomas wasn't with them that first day. And when he hears that the other disciples have seen the Lord, and in fact the text says that they kept on telling him, he wants hard evidence, he wants to be sure. And so he makes sure that he is with them the next time that they meet, the next time that Jesus appears to them. He greets them with the same words, peace be with you, and he goes directly to Thomas, knowing that Thomas needs reassuring. He invites Thomas to touch his scars, but Thomas no longer needs that. He is overwhelmed by the presence of Jesus and can only worship. He knows beyond doubt that he is in the presence of the risen Christ. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Although Thomas wasn't there on the first occasion, Jesus had already breathed his spirit into the community. And this breath of God reminds us of Genesis, when God breathed life into the first human being. And in the power of the resurrection, God breathes new life into us, the life of Jesus. God recreates and makes us new. The Holy Spirit of God lives in us always, which is a staggering thought. The Holy Spirit of God lives in us. The Holy Spirit constantly reassures us of God's presence with us. But the Holy Spirit is also given to make us holy. In Leviticus, God told the people, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And earlier in John's Gospel, Jesus prays for his disciples and asks his Father to make them holy, as Jesus is holy. To be holy is to be set apart, dedicated to God. Not to separate ourselves from everyone, but to deliberately and intentionally make God the center of all that we do and all that we are. To live as Jesus did, according to God's will and not according to what suits us. To become like Jesus. Holiness is only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. But we have to take sin seriously. In the first letter of John, he writes words that are familiar to us from our liturgy. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. Sin includes the things we do that we shouldn't, but it is much more than that. Sin could be described as anything that builds our kingdom rather than God's. It could be something good, but in reality it feeds our own ego. Anything that breaks relationship with God and with each other is sin. Jesus recognized that we are unable to be holy on our own, and so he asked his Father to do it. And he gives us the Holy Spirit of God to make us holy. Not that we have no responsibility for our lives, but so that we can begin to recognize the sin in our lives, the areas where we miss the mark and fall short. Confident that, also from the first letter of John, if we confess our sins, he is just and may be trusted to forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrongdoing. We are given the Holy Spirit of God so that we can be in the world as Jesus was in the world. We have been sent to do God's work, not our own. In the life of Jesus, God became human. And through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us, the life of Jesus is embodied in our lives. At least that is our calling. Dallas Willard describes it as being called to live 
as if he were we. We are called to be holy, not perfect, to live lives that are faithful to our calling, lives of holiness. And if we are to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, our lives should be marked by love and forgiveness. The communities in our readings today are trying to wrap their heads around the resurrection and what it means. What difference does the resurrection make in our lives? Having marked the event last week, do we just go back to normal? Or are our lives different, marked by the presence and power of God, so that God is visible in the world to others? The call to live holy lives and being sent out is not just as individuals, but noticeably as community. Paul described the church as the body of Christ, and together we are called to be Christ's presence in the world. The reading from Acts is very challenging, and the debate rages as to whether or not the church actually lived like that. Did they really share everything? But I think the most important phrases are firstly, with great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection, to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. What does it mean to bear witness to the resurrection? How do we proclaim the resurrection in the world? How do we proclaim that we have seen the Lord? Lord the Lord is still present. And then secondly, there was never a needy person among them. What kind of community are we? How do we create a community where nobody has any need? where we can all share because we believe that God will provide. The evidence for the resurrection is changed lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thomas saw this when the others told them over and over again that they had seen the Lord and he wanted what they had. He too wanted to see the Lord, so he made sure he was with them. What do others see when they look at us? Do they see people who go to church or a community that lives in the power of God? A community where God's presence is real, marked by love and forgiveness. Do they want what we have? Amen. kneel or be seated for our prayer. Good morning, Lord. What can we give you that you don't already have? It sounds like buying a gift for someone who has everything, but we can offer you a gift you don't already have. Dedication to serving you by serving others. The desire to do your will every day of our lives, and this is the meaning of love, the will to please others. Each day we want to be able to say, this day is yours, Lord, and to live it for you in good times and bad. You have loved us first, and we want to return your gifts and love you. All loving Christ, we pray for those who have lost their faith and all who are questioning and searching. Make us sensitive in listening to them and keep us from being judgmental or inward looking. We also pray for those who have recently found you. Help us to accompany them with warmth and wisdom so that together we may grow into a deeper knowledge of you. Loving Lord, let us always give thanks for gifts that help us grow in faith. Just as you sent your son on a mercy mission 
to save fallen humankind, so your Son put in place a stairway to heaven, so that where your Son has gone, we may follow. By your grace and our faith, may we join him on this stairway through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you have promised to be with us all our days. We pray for all elderly people, especially those people who are ill or housebound. In their weakness, may they find your strength, and in their loneliness, know the joy of your presence. Be to them a certain hope of life, that you have prepared for them in heaven and on earth. God bless us, we pray. Give us time for a task, peace for the pathway, wisdom for work, friends for the fireside, and love till our last. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray the prayer of Africa together. God bless Africa, to our people and leaders, give wisdom and integrity so that we may protect our children, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and preserve our natural heritage, and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen. The offertory hymn is hymn number 80, Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven and Voices Raise.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. We'll use the second Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks for his glorious resurrection from the dead. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored to us eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say... bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one spirit. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live more dwell in him, and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship and to grow in love and obedience according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please will you sit for some notices. There is no even song this evening. Our next even song will be Sunday the 5th of May and will be our next festival even song. And in the pew leaflet you will see the advert for the garden concert with Richard Cock. The 21st of April at four o'clock. Tickets are available on Quicket and we're going to be outdoors in the garden so it should be very beautiful. Please will you stand. Oh, and, and one final notice, please do join us for tea in the hall afterwards. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Our recessional hymn is hymn three. 80, Jesus, Lord, we look to thee. 380.